So this morning, we're going to use the word Easter as an acronym to look at five things that I believe that God fills us with because of the empty tomb. So because the tomb is empty, my life can be filled, can be full, first of all, it can be full of enlightenment about God's feelings. I don't have to wonder how about God feels about me. Now, I may wonder, but I will wonder in spite of what God revealed, not because of what he revealed. You see, sometimes words can be hallow. But actions are the thing that either give substance to or take away substance from our words. And so all through, all through Scripture, you can imagine, what would it be like to know that God, how would I know that God, how God feels about me? How would I know about his incredible love apart from what was done through Jesus Christ? You say, well, you could just read the words, read the Old Testament. Well, let's imagine Jesus never came. We're reading the Old Testament, and you find out that God has a profound love for the Jewish people, but it seems, at least through your cursory reading, that he has very little concern and very little love for the Gentiles, and probably most of us here would fit into that Gentile category. You say, oh, just flip over to the New Testament. Well, even flipping over to the Old New Testament, if it were not for the crucifixion and the resurrection... To begin with, there would be no New Testament. But imagine pulling those actions, Jesus' death and his resurrection from the pages of the New Testament, and all you would have is hollow words about a man who came and said that he loved you and he was from God, and he would be like any one of a thousand other people who had made that claim. But you see, here's the truth. Whenever Jesus came and got on that cross and resurrected, he left it up to you whether you would take advantage of this love for you, but he didn't leave it up to you as to whether you would be able to understand how God feels about you and how much God loves you. The Apostle Paul, one of the original bad boys of Scripture of the New Testament, wrote these words in Romans chapter 5 beginning in verse 7. He said, it's a difficult thing for someone to die for a righteous person. He goes, man, it's hard to die for a good guy. It may even be hard that someone would die for a good person. Yeah, you know, man, but God has shown his love. Not simply God has spoken his love. God has illustrated, he's shown the reality of his love that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. By his blood, we're now put right with God. How much more then will we be saved by him from God's anger? He said, listen, you need to know that the way that you lived and the way that you approached Jesus, you were, God was angry with you. He was bothered. He was mad. And he had to have him because of his just nature. He had to take it out on somebody. But he loved you so much that he didn't want to take it out on you. So he took it out on his, his son. And the wrath of God was consumed by the Son of God so that you and I might miss the wrath of God and might grasp the love of God. And so when I look at the cross and the empty tombs, regardless of who I am or where I am, whether I'm a friend of God now or choose to be an enemy, I cannot help but understand that God is enlightening me to understand that I love you no matter where you are. And I want to give you a chance to go from where you are to some place that's better. In 1 Peter 1, 18, and that passage is not on your notes, it's on the screen, Peter would write and say this, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. I get to see how he feels that he loves me more than gold or silver. He loves me more than I could ever imagine. And that he ransomed me. You see, a ransom is what you pay in order to rescue someone from evil. So let me encourage you to do what the first century church did every week, it seems, when they got together biblically and historically. is that they would pass emblems or they were probably on their table they didn't have to pass them but they would at every table there would be unleavened bread and there would be fruit of the vine wine or grape juice 
And Jesus pulled that out and he said, listen, you know, I know you guys down the road are going to sometimes think that I think that I, I don't love you. That Satan is going to lie to you and say, you know, yeah, you, you, God loves the good, but you're not included in that. And I want you every week to take of these emblems to remember that I shed my blood when you were an enemy. That I gave my body up when I was someone that you didn't care about. And I did it as a memorial to my love. And I ask you guys to get together and do this because you need to be reminded both of these emblems and you need to be reminded by each other. So I want to encourage as we take the Lord's Supper to focus on Jesus. Look at the painting. Listen to the words. And allow God to enlighten you no matter who you are, either friend or foe of God this morning. To be enlightened by how much he loves you. Let's pray. Father, as we take these emblems, allow light to flood our hearts and lives. To understand that even if we hate you, you love us. And that by while, while, Father, we may be people that are separated from you because of our stubbornness, we will not be separated from you because you didn't love us. Thank you, Father, I pray in Jesus' name.
broken hearts, broken lives, we will take them all.